Today I have a super strong duo to show you. These two master players are playing Lee Sin Tarek bot lane. It is a strange combo, because at first there doesn't seem to be a connection between the two champions. But these players have made it work in master tier with some absolutely ridiculous KDAs. The secret to this duo is the undodgeable combo that they can set up together, immediately jumping on squishy AD carries and bursting them before they can move. This combo gives both Lee Sin and Tarek completely new playstyles, and in my opinion it's actually one of the strongest strategies I've ever seen in League. Not only beating the meta, but absolutely destroying it every single game. So I interviewed them to find out exactly how they climb with it. But quickly, this video is sponsored by Alienware, and their new Aurora R13 PC, which is the official PC of the League of Legends World Championship. So not only is this PC recommended by pro players, even being used by teams for practice, like Team Liquid, but it's also the PC I've been using for the past three months. To play League, play other games, edit all of my videos, and stream on Twitch. The R13 is a top of the line PC, with the best graphics cards from AMD and Nvidia all the way up to the 3090. Unfortunately you won't be able to blame lag for any of your deaths anymore. If you want to play a competitive game, then this PC will keep your frames locked to make sure you never miss an important moment, or lag in a team fight. Or if you end up on a losing streak in League and need to take a break, then the R13 is great for playing other games as well, being able to run all of the new games in the highest level of detail. I've been playing Elden Ring, it's really fun, but I'm terrible because I've played League for the past 10 years so I don't have any of these skills. Call of Duty Warzone, pretty great. Even Cyberpunk, the story sucks but it does look really nice. Having a powerful PC like this has also made my work a lot easier. My video editing takes less time, I can get faster previews while I'm working, which means I can put more effort into the videos. I've been using this PC daily for months now and it has not let me down, even when I've been editing for like 12 hours. It's still just as good as when I turned it on. So if you want the same PC that Bjergsen uses, and who wouldn't, then click the link in the description to get your own. Back to our duo, our players today are named Peter Sicko, the Lee Sin, and For Peter, that's the Tarek. They have matching names because they've been duo queuing with this exact strategy ever since season 2. Back then the game was unimaginably different, with the old map, people picking stuff in any role, and most people not even knowing what the word meta meant. Our duo found that Lee Sin E used to decrease enemies' attack speed, so they tried to put him in bot lane against the marksman for a super effective counter. Back then, even Tarek was completely different, having a point and click stun which easily set up Lee Sin's Q, so he could land it whenever they needed. Flashing forward a few seasons and these two players had climbed as high as Challenger together with this combo, and this was back when you could duo all the way up. With Tarek's rework came a new way to play the duo, inventing a strategy that could stun any target from long range with absolutely no chance for it to miss. This duo is a dominating bot lane designed to kill enemies over and over again, setting up Peter on Lee Sin to carry every game. It sounds like the perfect solo queue strategy, and in Season 12 they're still playing this duo, climbing up to master promos together and then dodging to make sure they stay in Diamond 1 and can still duo. This dodging even increases their MMR so they can actually play against master players even while staying in Diamond 1. And unlike most duo bot lanes, they don't just win lane, they kill over and over again, then go top lane and kill their them, go mid lane, kill them, with Peter often ending the game with over 20 kills and making it look like they're smurfing. But what everyone really cares about, how does this combo work? And how can they have a stun that's an undodgeable skill shot? This strategy starts at level 1, where you can already start to see the crazy strength of this duo. Tarek grabs a sweeper and they invade together, checking for wards. Lee puts his ward down in this spot and then they move into this bush to wait for a victim. As soon as someone walks close to them, Tarek throws a stun and Lee can hit his Q for free. Already their damage is high, with Tarek getting extra attack speed from his passive, and of course Lee Sin always being a very strong early game champion. Lee holds his Q for as long as possible to force the enemy to flash away, and then still manages to follow them and get a kill. Even if enemies flash away and heal, he still has enough damage to get this first blood. The power continues as they move into lane. Immediately the duo focus on getting CS, aiming to keep the wave in the middle of the lane, and get to level 2 so they can set up their game winning combo. At level 2 both champions take their W. Tarek connects to Lee Sin to make sure that any stun he throws out will be doubled. This means that Lee Sin can throw out a Q, and if it hits an enemy, Lee can take Q to go in again, and Tarek's stun will land no matter what. The duo prep the stun before Lee Sin starts flying, so that the stun lands at the exact second he arrives, 
90% of the time. So if this is a squishy AD carry or a support, they'll be taking Lee Sin Q damage, get stunned, be slowed by Tarek's Glacial Augment, and be easily set up for a kill. The Lee Sin even takes Ignite to make sure they have enough damage to kill even at level 2, with Tarek having Exhaust to deny the enemies from turning it around. This combo is great, and they use it over and over again in lane to get stuns. But Tarek Lee Sin has many more options. Tarek can prepare his stun, and Lee Sin can ward hop into range to land it. Lee Sin W also works on minions of course, so whenever an enemy is near the wave, Lee Sin can W forwards with the stun, so wherever the enemies are, they're at risk of dying. So this combo has way more options to get a kill than any meta bot lane does. Usually you're reliant on a single hook landing, or getting a huge amount of poke down before you can fight, but this combo can work in multiple different ways for a free kill almost every time. That's why this combo is so powerful, and I believe it's almost unbeatable in solo queue when you play it properly. Both Tarek and Lee Sin become easier when you play them together, meaning they can be even more effective. After these early levels, I'd love to say they have a specific laning plan, but it's as simple as killing the enemies over and over again, because this duo together is stupidly strong compared to any meta bot lane. After each kill, they base to regen health and buy damage, then get right back to killing again. It's as simple as landing Lee Sin Q on an enemy, and immediately they're dead. One problem is that their CS is not very good. They're playing a melee bot lane, and they're fighting all of the time. But guess what? That means that the enemy bot lane is even worse, because they've also been fighting all game and they've probably been losing. You might think the counter to this strategy is to freeze your lane, using your range, and just not fight. Like for example this master tier Caitlyn tries to do, but then our duo just invade the enemy jungle and steal his camps, ready to one-shot him if he dares to enter, so even freezing won't stop them from getting ahead. At this point our players are happy to take 2 versus 3 fights and try and turn ganks. They have amazing single target burst damage, but also pretty good AoE damage, as well as AoE slows thanks to the Glacial Augment. So Lee Sin can be jumping around doing whatever he wants to, while the enemy AD carry is super slowed by the Glacial, making the matchup even worse for any meta AD carry. Lee Sin's mobility is something you don't see in bot lane, when a normal AD carry has either one dash or no dashes, and Lee Sin has a Q for gap closing as well as a W to escape. He can engage himself and then always get back to safety whenever he needs. If he's under tower, a quick W back to Tarek and he's safe. But I don't think that this is even the strongest point of this duo. That is when they get level 6. Tarek ult in bot lane is always pretty hard to use, because you don't really have any setup. If you ult at the wrong time, your champion loses probably 50% of its power, but with a duo like Lee Sin, Tarek finally has an engage, with the duo simply just walking straight into the tower, pretty much ignoring its existence and starting a dive. Either target is an easy kill, with Lee Sin kicking them against a wall for CC, ideally to set up a Tarek stun, but even if that misses, their damage is still good enough to get a kill. They don't really need to hit skill shots, they have a point and click knockup, and let's not forget, they can't take any damage. Enemies can't stop this dive from working, and they don't even have to play it perfectly to get a kill. Some of the stuff they do now is just mean to the enemies. They're controlling the whole lane, so anyone who comes down bot lane is going to have a bad time. Sitting under their tower isn't safe because of Tarek ultimate, staying far away from them isn't safe because of Lee Sin Q, and if they ever get low, Tarek always has this healing to sustain. After a couple of kills, laning phase is already over, our duo just walks straight past tower and refuse to let the enemies play. Thanks to Lee Sin's high early damage, as well as Tarek's resetting passive attack speed, they're able to kill the full tower while the enemies are dead, getting 5 full plates and first tower between 8 and 10 minutes. The next part of their game plan is very simple. They go to top lane and do the exact same thing. I'll just let this clip play in the background to show you what they can do. They won bot lane and rotated top immediately to go for that tower as well. They can dive the enemy top laner at any point, using Lee Sin's mobility and Tarek's stun to outplay them. Them. Juggling the tower aggro, they shield each other to make it easier. Anyone who comes top to try and stop them will also get dived, with Tarek's ultimate up again to make it impossible for them to die. Over and over, they collect kills on every champion. Let me remind you that all of these enemies are master MMR, and even they don't have an answer to this strategy. But hey, what if bot lane went badly? They aren't fed, and they're actually a couple of levels down. Well, even that doesn't really seem to matter thanks to Tarek's ult. The enemies engage this 2 versus 2, they really want to fight it, but then Tarek ults as early as he can, with Lee Sin being able to one-shot someone before the ultimate ends, so the fight is over before the enemies can do any damage. It's honestly hard for me to find a replay where they haven't got fed. Every game this combo looks so OP, it doesn't seem to matter how good the enemies are. At this point Lee Sin buys an Eclipse for a huge amount of early damage, as well as some very useful shielding, since they have so many shields already. Just like in bot lane, every fight is over as soon as Lee Sin lands his Q, so after a couple more minutes and a couple more kills, top tower is dead along with all 5 
these plates. Lee Sin and Tarek have roughly 4,000 more gold than the enemy bot lane, as well as Lee having the most gold in the game. So now, of course they're ready to start one-shotting people. What are you going to do when a 15 kill Lee Sin and Tarek are pushing your top inhib? You could go and try and defend, and die in one second, or you can surrender. And surrendering is often the option these master players choose. From this point, Lee Sin and Tarek work well together for a different reason. Their laning is great, their stun combo is great, but usually as the game goes on, Lee Sin starts to fall off. Of course he should be very fed by this point if their game plan has worked, but Tarek also can help Lee Sin solve a lot of his mid-game problems. Usually Lee is forced to be a champion that can only make plays with kick, and rely on his team for damage, but with this playstyle he is the damage carry for the whole game, going for a DPS build that can get kills without even using kick. This duo can stick on targets with Tarek keeping Lee Sin topped up on health, similar to a Soraka, but again every time Lee lands a Q that's a free kill. The duo almost never go for insect plays, preferring to go for picks around the map by themselves, and using the cake for the damage. Instead of having to outplay people and do some crazy combo, just going for a simple high damage burst is normally the best, which is good because it's usually the easiest thing to do. Ideally, Lee Sin should never leave Tarek's range. If he goes too far and breaks the tether, then Tarek can't stun or heal him, so the combo falls apart and Lee Sin is left vulnerable. They always need to keep an eye on each other to make sure they're playing together. This means that Tarek's job is to try and stay as close to Lee Sin as he can, while also helping his other teammates. When this combo gets to team fights, engaging is very simple. Just like always, Lee joins a fight by tagging someone with his Q, and Tarek can immediately activate his ult to make sure that no one will die when they go in. Lee looks to one-shot someone immediately while he's invulnerable, and then try and split enemies up to take smaller fights afterwards. You can take a risk and leave the Tarek alone, but it should only happen if it wins you the fight. Lots of the time, if you leave your Tarek by himself, it can get him killed, as he no longer has his healing buddy, and he's immobile so enemies can focus him and kill him. I asked the two of them what they talk about while they're playing this combo. Lee Sin is the shot caller, as he's the one who leads the plays by landing his Q, but they did say that this combo can make plays that are so fast that communication is not always needed. For example, in a fight, if Lee Sin hits his Q, then Tarek should immediately press his stun. There's no discussion needed. Lee Sin can just press his Q again and he'll get the kill. There's not even any time for them to say anything. It's much better to know exactly what your duo needs from you and just do it, because it means the enemies don't have enough time to think about what's happening, and I'm sure their 10 years of playing together really helps. So this build is definitely the best duo strategy I've ever seen, as well as likely one of the best ways to climb if you can play it well. But are there any downsides? Well of course, without an AD carry, killing towers and killing Baron is difficult. So if you're in a game that's even, those can be pretty big negatives. But in reality, these guys don't really have even games. They win bot lane because enemies can't out damage them, and then they win top lane because top lane can't out damage them, and then they dominate the map until enemies surrender, always having the backup of Tarek ultimate for late game teamfights if they really need it. There is no support with a better teamfighting ultimate in the game. The other negative, that Lee Sin is an early game champion, also isn't a problem with this combo, and that's because of Tarek's special damage enabling build, which means that Lee Sin doesn't actually fall off. So for me this is definitely an S tier pick, and I think you could argue that it's better than anything we've covered on this channel. It really isn't even that hard, as long as you can land Lee Sin Q. But most importantly, here are the special Lee Sin and Tarek builds for this duo that you need to follow if you want it to work. Here's the Lee Sin build, Eclipse is your mythic, cooldown reduction boots so that his cooldowns match Tarek's cooldowns a bit better. Even with just this one item you have enough damage to kill all squishy enemies, so they need to get some anti-tank items and become more of a bruiser, so Black Cleaver against armor, Serpent's Fang against shields, Death's Dance against AD because of the armor, or Spirit Visage against AP, which is also good for your healing. This Lee Sin build sounds like it's a bit low in damage, but then when you see the Tarek build you'll understand why, starting Relic Shield to help manage the wave, with Even Shroud as his mythic, to make sure that Lee Sin will do more damage, cooldown reduction boots for more stuns, he can go Knight's Vow to help Lee Sin stay alive, or even Zeke's Convergence to make him do even more damage, so Lee Sin actually doesn't need to buy much damage himself. Here are the runes, with Lee Sin taking pretty normal runes for the champion, that let him win longer fights, and Tarek going full utility, with Glacial for leaning. This duo have a Twitch stream, link is in the description, so please check that out as well as our sponsor. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy your LP.